Alright gamers, so today we are <clears throat> taking inspiration from Wingy Media so that I can talk about five overrated Doctor Who stories. I don't know how many of these I will do, so that's why I've titled it this way. Also, I'll probably do underrated at some point as well. But for now, here's some stories that I consider to be overrated. They could just be popular stories that I think are shit, or they could be good stories that get way too much appreciation. And to clarify, these aren't in any particular order because there's a lot of overrated Doctor Who stories. Anyway, let's begin. The Doctor Falls. Yeah, we're starting with a massive fucking bombshell for this video. I cannot WAIT to read the comments on this one. Because half the audience will probably drop out the second I've finished this segment, so let's just not talk about it. But yeah, I fucking despise the Doctor Falls. There are so many glaring flaws with this episode, but it's praised as if it's one of the greatest of all time, and I'm just so baffled by. I'm baffled to the point where I can't even speak. There is so much wrong with it. The biggest flaw, and the most glaring of all, is the master. If you've seen my end of time review, you know why John Sim is the best master of all time, but in this story, he is massacred. He is so poorly written. He is <clears throat> he is not written like the Sim master properly in this story. That trademark energy that he was known for as he was using it as a mask to hide his deeper and tortured nature, that's gone. His desire to be evil and appeal to the Doctor and just be important in the grand scheme of things, that's gone. He's just evil. For literally no reason. The scene where he walks away from the Doctor is the biggest showcase of how much they massacred his character. Because this Sim Master would never do this. He wouldn't ignore the Doctor's chance at help for no reason unless there was some ulterior motive. But there is no ulterior motive. He just does this because he's evil. Check the series 10 ranking if you want to know how I would change this if you wanted to keep it similar but actually have it be well written. But he was just brought into this story so that we could show how far Missy has come. But this doesn't work. Because the entire reason Missy's arc is even a thing was because of the Sim Master in the first place and how excellently he was shown and his relationship with the Doctor was shown in the end of time. That is just completely ignored in the story so he can be, look how evil I am Doctor. He is literally just Ainley Master in this story. And if Sim wasn't in this story and he was replaced with Ainley's Master, I probably wouldn't hate it as much, because Ainley's master is one dimensional, he has no character outside of being evil for the sake of being evil. The sim master wasn't just evil for the sake of being evil, there was so much more going on. The second biggest failure of this story is doing the Moffat trope of pushing things to the side to focus on something less interesting. I go more in depth with this later, but for this story, World Enough and Time was building up the Cybermen for the entire time. But this story pretty much just brushes them off so we can focus on this village? What? The Cybermen make barely any appearances in this episode, and when they finally do show, we get an excellent action scene, only for that to end. And I thought this could have been amazing. We could have seen the 12th Doctor go out and Bill dies next to him and it would have been emotional as fuck. But then, we get quite possibly one of the worst Deus Ex Machinas in the entire show as the fucking puddle bitch from the pilot comes back and saves Bill. On every possible conceivable level, this is fucking retarded. All the emotional weight of Bill becoming a Cyberman is pointless. The Doctor Falls is Capaldi's worst finale, I don't care what anyone says. Hellbent has so many more good things in it than this piece of shit. The Visitation The Visitation is a story I've never understood the love for, and this one I was just left incredibly bored by. Seriously, what is there actually alike with this story? It's boring, uneventful, the aliens are crap and the TARDIS team is just as annoying as usual. For real, it's always just the same crap with them. Stay in the TARDIS slash stay here. They don't. Annoying bickering, no chemistry, blah blah blah, that's so wank. 
Also, the cliffhangers in this story leave a lot to be desired. The f one of them just uses that crap cliche of, Oh, we have to kill the Doctor in the cliffhanger! Do we? And then the resolution is that, it's, No! Wait! We can't kill him! Ugh. It's such an old, worn, down, trait cliche of classic Who. Also, the tie into this being the Fire of London is really stupid. It's literally just these three aliens want to meet in this place, then a torch is accidentally dropped and it starts a fire. That's so dumb! You disingenuous, dense motherfucker! Obviously you have to know something about something or you couldn't- Start the fire! Blink. Now Blink is the only episode in this video that I actually do really like. And this episode itself is really good. But to this day, this is the highest rated episode of Doctor Who as a whole. It just no. It's not even the best episode of Series 3. It's not even Moffat's best script. Pretty sure on a rough Moffat, this is actually his weakest episode. Don't get me wrong, the concept of the Weeping Angels is obviously brilliant and it always will be. But compare that to the Empty Child, the Fireplace Robots and the Vashta Narada and this one isn't as good. I can think of at least three episodes in Series 3 alone that are much better than this one, that don't get enough praise compared to this one. Blink is a genius bit of masterpiece writing, but compared to stories with the Sim Master in, and stories where the Doctor becomes a human, it doesn't stand a chance. And to be honest, it's not even the best Doctor Light episode. Turn Left runs fucking light years around this one. And it shows the world in such a much more interesting perspective without the Doctor in. While not bad by any means, Blink is definitely overrated. Honestly, Flesh and Stone Time of Angels got the name wrong, don't, doesn't matter, don't care, is still better than this story. And Blink doesn't have nearly as much rewatch value as it should, because once you know most of the mysteries, it's just not as impactful. They're still clever, and you realise that they're clever, but not impactful. I mean, it's it's still a top 5 series 3 episode, but I'm just... I, uh, uh. Survival. After my first time watching this story, I was blown away by the fact that it's a fan favourite because of how absolutely fucking ridiculous it was. Seriously! People labelled this as this deep, subversive masterpiece that perfectly ended Classic Who. And when I watched it, I just thought it was hilarious. Okay, so this is season 26, so 7 and Ace are just as excellent as always. But everything else is just crap. The Master's plan in this one especially is just so stupid. So, <clears throat> okay, so, the Master, trapped on a planet of cheetah fairies for some reason, becomes part of their society and uses his teleporting black cat to bring teenagers from Perivale specifically for some reason into this place. The Master, with fangs and yellow eyes for some reason, then decides to force... <laughs> decides to force some teenager to bring him back to reality and then gets a gang of teenagers to... Uh, uh, he gets a gang of teenagers to then have one of them have a motorcycle jousting battle with the Doctor. What the actual fuck is that? Why is this considered to be one of the best Seventh Doctor stories? It's not even the best of season 26. That stupid plan alone is a reason to dislike this episode. Like I said, Seven and Ace are still great here, and this wraps up her arc perfectly, but the story is just... What the fuck? I seriously can't believe the person who wrote this has been the only classic Who writer brought back to come into New Who. Bruh. The Big Bang, out of all these episodes, is definitely the most overrated, because this one is seen by loads of people as the one of the best New Who finales. And at that point, I just have to question whether you've seen most of them. Because this one doesn't even compare to the majority. Even the Doctor Falls is better than this runaround shit heap. 
and I fucking hate the Doctor Falls. This episode to me is systematic with everything wrong with Moffat finales, because even the great ones do this as well. The first part, if it's a two-parter, will show a really interesting idea. Check, check, check and check. It'll end on an absolutely amazing cliffhanger. Check, check, check and check. The second part will be practically a completely different story ignoring the most interesting elements out of the first one to focus on something else. Dark War, Missy setup and the Cybermen coming back from the dead is completely ignored in the second part. Heaven Sent sets up the Doctor finally returning to Gallifrey only to have him not be on the planet for long enough before deciding to fuck off. World Enough and Time sets up the Mondastian Cybermen in the most perfect way possible and brings back the Sim Master in the greatest Master Reveal scene of all time, only to have the Doctor Falls neglect the Cybermen for the majority of its runtime and ruins the Sim Master in the very few scenes that he's actually in. The Pandorica Opens sets up every single monster in the universe banding together to trap the Doctor in the Pandorica. The second part? The only monster to even fucking appear is a disabled Dalek that is practically useless and the rest of the runtime is spent running around a museum with Jack's Vortex Manipulator. Only to have the Doctor projectile launch himself into the TARDIS explosion and wipe himself out of existence, and this could have been good for some drama? Until he gets brought back in a really contrived way like 10 minutes later, and the Pons getting married, something this whole series was leading up to, feels pointless. Because Amy hasn't developed past the point of literally going to cheat on her husband for the Doctor, and that's one of the many reasons I hate this finale. It just feels pointless and empty. Nothing is really achieved, and what is achieved feels unearned. Say what you want about Russell's finales, but all of them showed a journey of something, or something having a lasting impact on the grand narrative, or the Doctor especially. Stephen never really did this, and the one time he could have done it well with Clara, the Doctor's memory was wiped. The other time he does this with River, she's seen three times again ever, and he acts as if they aren't married for most of the time. That's why the Big Bang is the most overrated finale ever. Well, it's either this or the Doctor Falls, I'm still undecided. So, those were some stories in Doctor Who that I find to be very overrated. Tell me in the comments if you agree, or if there's any episodes that you think are overrated. And maybe I'll agree. And maybe it'll be in the next video. Mm, I'm just saying. Also, guys, did you notice that my last video was the only video I've made that was under 10 minutes in, like, over a year? I, I just want to point that out. I think it's pretty cool. Well, that would be the end of the video. I would like to quickly address the reviews, because... I know for some reason, even though I said that we're going on hiatus, everyone thinks that I've stopped doing them indefinitely, which I haven't. I did say they were going on hiatus, they weren't ending, and this was simply because of a lack of time. Uploading weekly was only possible because of lockdown, and despite the fact I'm in a lockdown while this video's being filmed, we're not, in an, we're not going to be in a six month lockdown again, I hope. Additionally, during that six-month lockdown, it's not like I had anything else to do. I didn't have college at the time. I'd left high school without doing my GCSE, so I had no work other than doing YouTube and going on Xbox with my friends. As you can probably imagine, doing a fucking media course in a lockdown where you can only meet up with one person at the most is a pain in the arse. So I don't have as much time to work on videos, so I knew reviews would have to go on hold anyway. My current work plan is, besides the podcast, which I'm hoping is out by the time this is out, I, every two videos I make for the main channel, I make one review, because the reviews do not take nearly as long to write, but they do take as long, if not longer, to edit. My current wish of wanting to do them so I can have them come out for a long time is to finish Series 8 to Series 10, and then I'll start releasing them. If I'm confident in my abilities to get them out really, really quickly, and keep up the work, I'll finish Series 9 and then I'll start releasing them. But anyways, yeah, I just, the only reason I'm not making a tweet about this, saying that the reviews aren't dead, or making a post about it on Instagram, is because I know that everyone would just be like, oh, the reviews are coming back, when are the reviews come back, and then when they don't come back for ages, they'll be like, you said reviews are coming back, I just, I just thought it would be easier to address this in a video, because I'm pretty sure this video's not coming out until like, six months after it's been made. 
But yeah, that was that. I hope you did enjoy this video. I know it's a bit more of a filler one, but I'm trying to do Torchwood and Jack is back for Torchwood has taken a really long time. So I just need some fillerish videos. Anyway, bye. I've, I've kept your time long enough. Thank you for watching. <laughs>